welcome everyone to the new fly fisher. My name's Mark Melnick. I love spring steelhead fly fishing in the Great Lakes, and one of the best places to go is the rivers of Ohio. Joining me on my adventure is Tom Rosenbauer and Jeff Blood, who are both excited about the prospects of hooking into some bright, fresh chrome. This is going to be a very technical and detailed show with lots of great information. Even better, the nymphing techniques we will discuss have applications for other species too, such as trout. It's a nice one too. Great fish, fantastic steelhead. Stay with us for this great adventure on the rivers of Ohio. All this coming up next on the new Fly Fisher. Welcome to the southern shores of Lake Erie, specifically the freshwater arteries that make up the lifeblood of this great lake. Lake Erie is blessed with multiple tributaries all along its shoreline. The lake borders the states of Michigan, New York, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. All four states contribute to the stocking of salmonids, specifically steelhead or lake run rainbow trout into Lake Erie for the benefit of the lake and anglers alike. We are fishing the tributaries of Lake Erie in Ohio, making the steel mansion in Painesville our home for the week. Fishing with us is local steelhead expert Jeff Blood and good friend Tom Rosenbauer. Both gentlemen are well fished and experts in their own right. Fishing for steelhead happens in the fall and in the spring. It's an important industry and great draw for anglers alike in Ohio. Fall time sees lake run rainbow trout coming into the system to feed on freshly spawned eggs. Springtime sees them return to the rivers looking to spawn themselves. It's mid-April and the steelhead are just entering the system. Fresh fish or fish just entering the river are our target. The plan is to fish the southern shore of Ohio and the surrounding rivers and creeks that empty into Lake Erie. I've never fished here before, and upon approaching this river, I've noticed that because of recent rains and spring runoff, the water's really dirty. I don't know what's beyond four feet from the edge of the river. When approaching a piece of water for the first time, don't go barging in up to your knees right away. Stand back and fish as close as you can to where you might think that fish may lay. It turns out we've been watching some anglers catching fish and they're super tight to this bank. So don't go barging in. Start short to yourself, cast out, fish it, and then work your way out. What's considered perfect watercolor for steelhead? Good question. In the spring, there are a variety of factors that will alter the color of the water. Watercolor is really dictated by the amount of sediment or material in the water after a natural weather event. Some of the factors that play into the color of the water include rainfall, river bottom makeup, and the amount of spring runoff that the system is experiencing. Ideal watercolor should be slightly tinted or off color where you can see up to two feet or so in the water. A slight tinge in color allows fish to react to a fly versus seeing it clearly and spooking. Stained water allows steelhead to eat as that hit can be more of a reaction bite. You know, when you're fishing for migratory fish like steelhead, you got two options. You either are flexible and you wait till conditions are perfect. You call a fly shop, you check the internet, you get on the river when it's just right. Or you do what we're doing here and you take what the river offers you. You planned a trip, you're gonna go. So we're here, the water was high, it's dropping now, it looks a little bit better, it's starting to clear. We're gonna make the best of it, have fun, and try to catch some steelhead. I came up to this spot here, kind of worked my way up. It looks like pretty marginal water, but you never know, with the high water that we've had, the steelhead have dropped back in the shallower water. So there's very big expanse of fast water here with a tree overhanging, but the current out there, to my eye, is way too fast. There's just a little bit of softer water on the inside here, and I'm just gonna take a few casts in this, in this shallow, softer water, just in case there might be a fish in here. So I came up, I came up on this fast water here and I noticed this soft water on the inside where that, where that whirlpool goes around. And uh, I thought maybe just ahead of that swirling whirlpool where that big foam thing is, where those bubbles are coming down there, there's a nice soft edge 
it's relatively deep in there and sure enough second cast there was a fish in there so just looking for that little bit softer water you know this this whirlpool would be tough but that nice even soft water just above there not really a good place to land him in here i'd like to be below him so you know pulling a fish upstream is always tough the hook's going to pull out so i think what i'm going to do is try to run downstream and get below him so i can get him into a little bit slower water too so i'm going to get in the water here and uh and uh try to get below him and get in a little bit better landing spot a nice fish Oh, and he ate the egg. This fish ate a fly that was uh, given to me by an angler who's been doing well with it. It's a yellow, yellow, big yellow yarn egg fly. And uh, I've got to go over and thank him for that. Well, there he is. Pretty bright steelhead. Give him a drink. Whoa! And off he goes. So you can fish for these fish with, with streamers, with nymphs, with traditional uh, salmon flies or steelhead flies, but today what we're going to do is fish some egg flies. It's pretty straightforward setup. It's it's basically nymph fishing, and I've got a floating line. It's plain old floating line, standard floating line, and then I've got a leader butt. Then I've got cider material on here, so this is a multicolored section that I can keep an eye on as my fly drifts. And then I have, uh, you can either have a knot or a swivel or a tippet ring and then a long piece of fluorocarbon tippet uh, fairly thin to get the, those flies down to the fish and then uh, I've got a couple of egg patterns on here I've got a chartreuse one and kind of a natural egg color I'm gonna try uh, a tight line euro nymphing type where I'm gonna put some what I'm gonna do is put some split shot ahead of that first fly and then I will just plunk it out there with a high rod, follow that cider down the current and uh, watch for any hesitation. As you can see, Tom is using a very different technique for targeting these steelhead than I am. He's tight lining with a cider, which means that he's in direct contact with his fly uh, and the weight that he has to get his fly down to the bottom. I'm using an indicator, which uh, is not unlike a bobber, um, which shows what's going on beneath the surface for me, but I don't directly feel what Tom feels. So it's two very different ways of presenting eggs and, and nymphs, um, and they're both very effective in their own right. You know what, to each his own. Tom loves the sensitivity of being able to feel those fish take or to feel the bottom, and I like the action of seeing the bobber go down, the indicator go down, and setting the hook on these fantastic Great Lakes steelhead. Oh, yeah! <laughs> well, it's been a long couple of days for me, let me tell you that much for free. But through the guidance of experts like Tom and of course Jeff, it's finally come to fruition. Come tight on a steelhead after losing fish after fish. It's a nice one too. And, uh, and it took the white zonker into my feet. Hey, Tom, you were going to give me a hand? Yeah. Great. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome, Mark. Nice job. Nice job. Great fish. Fantastic steelhead. Good stuff. I'll get him unbuttoned. He wasn't coming loose anytime soon. No, you get you hooked him well. Took the white zonker. Yep, huh? white zonker. Cool. Great fish. Yep. Fantastic. All right. Let's go see. Now that the skunk's off my back, 
Maybe things will change a bit. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. I hope so. <laughs> we decide to pack things up and hit a smaller tributary of Lake Erie. Tom asked Jeff the most important of questions. Where do we look for steelhead in a river? So we're here on a smaller steelhead stream, a tributary of a larger river. And um, I'm here with Jeff Blood, who grew up in this area and knows this fishery intimately. And I want to talk a little bit about how you read the water, because where you put your fly is the most important thing, right? Absolutely, Tom. If you look at this water, Tom, uh, it's got, you know, nice current coming in, yep. but it's not too heavy. Right. So they're not expending a lot of energy to mm -hmm. stay here. They drop down in, there's a ledge over there. So they like structure, they like rocks, like is in the water right here. And, uh, you know, it's just a soft drift coming down through, perfect place to hold them. And you want to spend a little more time on this type of a pool than you might on a, you know, another smaller, lesser pool as you go up the stream. There we go. Yeah, we got a nice steelhead here. So he was laying right in that the soft seam right there. <clears throat> and there's, uh, you know, some good structure in a ledge right down there. Just a perfect place for him to be. And uh, it's not a particularly huge fish, but it's a nice fish. So I caught him on a, on a white zonker, and I find that fly to be particularly effective, especially on the Lake Erie tribs. <clears throat> and what I believe it's imitating is uh, an emerald shiner, and particularly a dead emerald shiner, which uh, th the reason why it works well is, you know, there's natural mortality every day out in the lake and the fish feed on the dead ones. A lot of people don't know that, but they do. So this looks like a nice little male. And you can see that white zonker in his mouth. So here we go. Got a little color to him. Whoops. That's a nice little male. Whoop, and he's off and ready to catch again. Ew! Oh, yeah! All right, a jump. Jeff was fishing down there in a little bit slower water, and I always like to fish a little bit more towards the head. Um, I think the fish are easier to catch when they're in the faster water. They're easier to fool. They have to grab it quicker. And um, this fish, it didn't take him long to, to grab that, uh, that white zonker. are the only four diamond hotel in all of Lake Geauga or Ashabula counties. Uh, it's as good as you can get in Ohio. We're a 16 room hotel and a party center, so we're really two businesses in one. Uh, we have the potential for weddings or, or corporate meetings up to 125 people, but down to rooms that will occupy just uh, less than 10. We have 16 guest rooms and uh, they're all available for anything, uh, small ones up to large ones, everything different, everything intriguing and inviting. Um, uh, it really works very, very well. Fly fishing is, is always uh, very popular uh, in the local area and in, in, in general, the whole northern Ohio area. Just on my way to work, I passed the Grand River, uh, which is a fantastic place for fly fishing. 
uh, like I said, the silver bullets, uh, the steelhead. It's it's a great place to be, but we also have uh, you know all of Lake Erie with the fly fishing there. The fishing here is is just amazing, and I think it's one of the undersung, underpublicized travel opportunities that people don't know so much about. I'm working on trying to get the word out there. We at the New Fly Fisher have a storied past in Ohio, namely because the fishing for steelhead is incredible. There you go. Now bring it out, there's a snag there. That's, that's. Fish on. Yeah. <laughs> right there. What a, what a technique, Jeff. What a technique, right there. <laughs> this is outstanding. Steelhead are high jumping, line pulling, knuckle busting adversaries on fly. They will readily take egg patterns, zonkers, stone flies, and worm imitations. And when a fish eats, you'll know it for sure. Any unnatural movement on your tight line or indicator, set the hook. When you're fishing a pool or a run, how deep should you set your indicator rig on your leader? It's a very easy question and it could make the difference between catching and not catching anything all day. Well, a great rule of thumb is if you can estimate how deep the pool is or the run is that you're going to be fishing. Go one and a half times that depth where you say indicator on your leader. So if it's a four foot deep pool that you're fishing, set your indicator at the six foot mark. If it's a five foot deep pool that you're fishing, set your indicator at a seven and a half foot mark. When you approach a pool and you're ready to start fishing it, you know how deep it is or approximately, go one and a half times and that's where you set your indicator. All right, so we come to this big bend pool here on this river. And this was the third drift through and boom. Got a really nice steelhead here. Yeah, he ate the egg. Look at how fresh this fish looks. Oh my gosh, it's just fantastic. Just beautiful. This is what you come to Ohio for. <laughs> what a great fish. This is amazing. Hot, clean, fresh fish. There it goes. <laughs> that was fun. That was really, really fun. <laughs> Ate the egg. Perfect. So the equipment that we use while fishing Great Lakes Steelhead here in this great state of Ohio is really quite simple. I have a nine foot eight weight fly rod, a large arbor reel for sure, because these steelhead will take you for a run, maybe not quite into your backing, but you do want a reel that'll be able to pick up line really fast when they turn around and come back at you. For leader, we've got a nine foot three X tapered leader, three X tippet. Now, the most important thing I can say to bring along with you when you come to Ohio is flies. Whatever fly selection you choose to bring, make sure you bring a lot of them. We were fishing with egg patterns and white zonkers and we did go through a lot these rivers can be very snaggy and craggy and you want to make sure you've got your favorite flies on hand while fishing these great lake steelhead Ooh, hot fish it's not a giant but man oh man is it fresh silver And he took the top fly, he took the egg. Good fish, clean fish. What a fantastic fish. Hey Jeff, you wanna come and help me with this? He did, yeah, he took the, he took the top one. But that fish ate, I set the hook and he just went, <laughs> <laughs> <That's> beautiful. <clears throat> 
Man, this cold water, what do you think it is? Low 40s, right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty cold. It's cold, but there's still, oh, look at that. No, man, they still got lots of, lots of power left. Here we go, right to you. Yeah, ate, ate an orange egg. Well, that about does it for this spring steelhead adventure in Ohio. Thanks for watching. I want to thank Jeff Blood and Tom Rosenbauer for their expert advice, as well as everyone in the great state of Ohio who helped make this possible. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way to do so than with a fly rod in your hand? For everyone from the new Fly Fisher, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you on the tributaries of the Great Lake Erie. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick from the new Fly Fisher Television Show. If you enjoyed that video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Also, we're uploading new videos all the time, so hit the bell to be notified when the next one goes up.